Hi everyone, my name is Anton Pelcher. I'm an engineer and I've been building fish farms for over 10 years. How much time do you think it takes to build a fish farm? Let's take for example the farm with the capacity of 10 tons of grout fish a year, which could bring you around 6,500 US dollars of income per month. Today we are going to take a closer look at the roadmap for building a fish farm. How long does it take? What is the sequence of steps to properly build and launch a fish farm? And the most important, why you need to watch the video all the way through. We will talk about 7 common mistakes due to committing which many entrepreneurs lose a lot of time, nerves and money. Let's go! Well, let's start with how long it generally takes to build a fish farm. There is no one definite answer. I will explain why. On the one hand, a RAS fish farm can be located in the existing building of 50 square meters. And on the other hand, it could be a large-scale farm with the capacity of, let's say, 1,000 tons of grower fish per year, which will be located in a new building of around 10,000 square meters which you need to build. You understand that these are completely different situations. So let's discuss it from the beginning to the end, and we will try to determine some range. Small farm in an existing building is usually implemented in 3-4 months. This time is needed to produce the equipment, to bring this equipment to the farm, install it, lay pipelines, weld tanks, install everything and start the biofilter. You will not build even the smallest farm in a week or two. To build such a mega farm usually takes a year and a half to two years, because you have to go through quite a lot of steps, which we are going to consider now. Now we move on to what is needed and what is the sequence of steps to start a small farm, a conditional residential scale farm, as well as a large industrial one. Let's start with a small one. You need to roughly estimate the equipment layout, what way it will be located inside the building. The equipment needs to be manufactured, delivered, installed, and the biofilter has to be started. That's it, your system is up and running. That's what takes exactly three to four months. And the process of setting up a large industrial farm is much more interesting and complicated. Let's start with the fact that such projects are usually implemented with loan financing, and a feasibility study is required. In fact, there is a business plan, which is developed in conjunction with a particular technology, complete study of the market, economics, calculation and specifications of all the equipment, that is, the concept of the project offered to a potential investor or creditor. Since the project is serious, this requires a complex approach to the process. Some figures written down on a napkin will not work, though it could be that way if you are planning a small farm. If the funding is approved, the second necessary step is site-specific surveys. Let's assume that you already have a site. In order to understand whether you can build a farm there or not, you need to carry out surveys. What is that? Analysis of all water sources, water quality and its parameters, analysis of the soil and so on. In general, a full range of engineering, geological, geodetic and other surveys should be carried out. All topographic surveys are collected so that there is a basis for the design works. If everything is fine at the initial step, the next step is the design work, the technological section. That is, by no means a building is designed first, because the technology, RAS equipment, is the core of your farm, and it imposes requirements on what the building should be, not the other way around. At large farms, this is only way, while at a small farm, it's possible to do the opposite. For large scales farm, the design works are carried out first, then the standards and requirements for the building are determined. After the terms of reference for the construction of the building and utility lines are formed, the building is designed. After the building is designed, the architecture section is made, including metal constructions and reinforced concrete structures sections. So with the result, all construction works are fully designed. As soon as the entire construction design is finalized, the master plan is worked out. The next step is to design the engineering systems of the building. That is, you don't just need to construct a building, but it needs to be provided with all utility lines, water supply, drainage, ventilation, electricity, security system, lighting, and so on. All these requires project documentation. 
generally to proceed to the step of the project expertise, which I will tell you about. You need 12 accomplished design sections, if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, it's quite a lot, and so also to say volumes of documentation required to proceed to the design documentation expertise are finalized. The next step is to have the entire set of project documentation, including the technology, as well as all other related sections, submitted to an expert appraisal. These expertise can be either private or public. Both of them, as rule, find some inaccuracies, some mistakes that need to be corrected. Most often, state expertise in my country is tougher and takes longer. By the way, under the Russian current legislation, an expert review is mandatory if the project has an area of more than 1,500 square meters or presumes the usage of water from an open water source, such as a river or a lake. But if we talk about a really large industrial facility, it will definitely be larger than 1,500 square meters. The next stage is the engineering design, which also implies detailed equipment layout. This documentation is worked out for RAS technological line, as well as for the building and utility lines. And this documentation is used not for expert review, but for real construction and installation works. It's more detailed, it's more accurate, and the building is actually built and all RAS equipment is installed in accordance with it. The next stage is construction of the building foundation, concrete work, erection of the metal structures, and so on. Everything is done to construct the building and close the heating circuit. As a rule, it's done before winter, which is logical. The next step is the installation of utility lines, because before installing the equipment, the building must be provided with heating, electricity, water supply to the tanks, sewage, ventilation, so that it's not stuffy inside the building. Well, generally all that is required for the operation of the system and even for installation works. Therefore, after laying the utility lines, welding of plastic tanks starts. And sometimes welding of plastic tanks is performed in parallel, but it's necessary that the temperature inside the building is already more than 15 degrees Celsius, otherwise the plastic will not weld. In case of concrete tanks, they are poured much earlier. After the plastic tanks are welded, the main equipment is brought in, put in place, and piping is laid. Hundreds of meters and sometimes kilometers of pipelines are laid. All the necessary units are tied in, and thus the system is connected to the water supply, sewage, drainage, and so on. Once all the equipment has been installed, electricity is connected. The electrical assembly is connected to the control panel, and the control panel is connected to the main switchboard, the so-called water distribution sport, so that the water supply and control of each unit is provided properly. After the electrical system installation, the system is filled with water and hydraulic tests are carried out. That is, the entire rest line is filled and checked for leaks and circulation parameters to make sure that everything works correctly, and if something is leaking, it's repaired. And the last stage is starting up the biofilters. When the system is already filled with water, biofilter reagents are poured, we need to wait until the biofilter starts up. It takes about a month, and after the biofilter is launched, the system is stocked. So all these complex of measures takes at least a year, maximum two years. Project can be implemented in less than a year, only if there is no expertise or if the RAS equipment is installed inside the existing building. Then it's really possible to implement the project in less than a year. In other cases, as a rule, it takes a year to two, if we have to go through all the circus of hell. And now let's talk about the six typical mistakes that entrepreneurs make when building their own fish farms. And by the way, in my videos I talk a lot about how to avoid committing errors when starting your own project. So if you are interested in avoiding them and doing it right, be sure to subscribe to my channel, press the like button and let's go on. And the first mistake you can make is buying the land first and then checking if it's suitable for constructing a fish farm. In fact, there may be a lot of nuances and aspects. It may not comply with the category of purpose, just from the point of view of legalization. Maybe there is poor quality water, insufficient electrical power supply, no gas. Okay, gas it's not the most important. The most important thing is if there is no sewage, if there are neighbor sites adjacent to yours, and there is no real place to discharge the wastewater. So be sure to check if your plot is suitable before you buy it. Follow the link if you are interested. Watch a separate video dedicated to choosing the right side. Get more information and don't make these mistakes. 
The second typical mistake is to construct a building first and then think about how to install rice equipment. Generally, it works that way, but it's not the best option. If you construct a building and then try to fit rice equipment into it, of course it will fit there. But it will not be optimal in terms of placement, in terms of height, something will be wrong with the floors, with the height of the equipment and the ceiling, with locating the utility rooms. But if you don't think through the whole process in advance, you can doom yourself to a lot of problems. And what does it imply? It's possible extra energy loss, extra capital costs, some inconvenience and lower productivity of the farm. Why do that when you can plan and design everything in advance and then proceed with the construction? So that's the second mistake. The third mistake. Pouring floors ahead of time, that is, not only constructing the building, but also preemptively pouring the concrete floors. It seems to you that everything is cool. But the technology often requires a special configuration of floors. As a minimum, you need slopes and drains to divert water from the floor, because this is production connected with water. So water splashes onto the floor, and in order for the puddles not be formed, you need properly discharge it. Water treatment tanks are often made of concrete below zero level. Special trays are laid into the floors, or all pipes are buried in the concrete, so they don't get in the way. Therefore, everyone who builds or is going to build a fish farm should first decide on the layout of the equipment, how the pipes will run and only then pour concrete floors. This is the third mistake. The next mistake is to first buy rice equipment and purchase it from various suppliers and then to start thinking how to arrange, install and make it operate as a part of one system. It really happens. You found a good drum filter somewhere. You bought an oxygenator from another producer. And then it turns out that the drum filter is two times more powerful than needed and the oxygenator is not very suitable, so you need to buy another one. And then you bought pipes of too small a diameter and the adjustment of the whole system begins. It costs not only money to replace something. Buy a new unit and some unused spare parts will then just lie in the warehouse for years but also waste of time and energy, because everything is not optimally planned and designed. Well, why waste money when you can think of everything in advance? This is the fourth mistake. Next mistake. Preemptive ordering of stocking material. Of course, you want to stock your tanks with fish as soon as possible. And I understand that perfectly. But when you are still in the process of construction, when there is not yet a 100% guaranteed deadline of starting your farm, ordering stocking material is very dangerous. Why? In my opinion, and I have quite a lot of experience, almost all projects are delayed. As a minimum due to building construction terms shifting. I don't know why, but for some reason it happens. The construction of the building is delayed. The entrepreneur sometimes just can't do anything about it. Sometimes we can't keep up with the finances, but the supplier of stocking material is ready to deliver it in accordance with the order terms. Here's a clear deadline, which is, for example, the 20th of April, when he has to release the stocking material. And if he doesn't do that, it will grow and fill all the tanks, undermining all his commitments to other customers. Also, it will require feed, the fry will not have enough oxygen, and in general, he will face quite a lot of difficulties. And he starts to put pressure on you. And you have nothing ready yet. And then the mess and confusion start. First of all, a race. And secondly, an unclear situation where to keep this fry while the system is not yet installed and launched. Therefore, order stocking material when you are 100% sure about the exact time of your farm launch. And this is the fifth mistake. And the last one is the errors committed during the construction. Many times I have seen hangars built to locate a RAS without a clear understanding of the requirements of these buildings. Well, for example, there are windows in the rooms where RAS equipment is located. And in such spaces, windows are not required. On the contrary, it's counterproductive. In addition to your extra costs, water will start blooming. Floors. For example, flat floors that do not provide for proper water drainage. Next is the ceiling height. The ceilings are too low and the equipment doesn't fit, or the ceilings are too high, and you get unnecessary space that you need to constantly heat and spend a lot of money annually. Or the insulation that absorbs moisture. Don't use mineral wool, because it really absorbs moisture rapidly loses its insulating properties, and then you spend a lot of money to heat the building. Incorrectly located utility rooms. Well, actually you can make a lot of mistakes during construction. 
So this is the sixth major mistake – construction without understanding the requirements for the RAS farm building. What do you think is the shortest time frame that will allow you to build a small farm or an industrial facility? Write it in the comments, I'm interested to know your opinion, and even more so if you've implemented such a project before. And now following the link below, you can download a bonus. It's a small farm startup calendar and a large industrial farm startup calendar as well. Why you need it? For you to generally navigate and understand what steps you need to go through in order to launch your own fish farming project. I hope you found this video useful. And if so, please press the like button and subscribe to my channel. This is Anton Pelcher and my channel on how to farm fish and make good money from it. Bye!